already. So today, Hannah and I, I say Hannah and I, she obviously had to take little Josiah out to eat or whatever it was, but we're happy to have some family visiting with us today from Wisconsin in the fourth, fifth row back. Can you just give a little wave, everybody? My, my, shy, uh, my shy family there is uh, giving a wave. Very good. So my mom and my sister, my nephew's downstairs for kids' church, but my Aunt Christy and my cousins Caitlin and Emily are here. Uh, my Uncle Jason would have typically been uh, with us this morning, but uh, he wasn't able to, so I'm going to talk about him. I'm going to tell a story about him. Uh, I figured that would be nice because he's not, uh, not here. I would do it if he, even if he was here, but it's more fun because he's not, okay? So we were on vacation with my family to a place called Lac de Flambeau years ago. That probably doesn't sound familiar to you because it's in Wisconsin and not in Ohio. It's around the area of Wisconsin Dells. Show of hands, who's been to Wisconsin Dells, the water park capital of the world? Awesome. Very good. So really, really cool place. But we had the opportunity to rent a pontoon boat for the duration of our vacation. And so we did. And we could you know, go fishing with it or take it out for some boat rides or whatever. Well, one morning, my Uncle Jason, he took us out, me and my cousins out fishing. And I remember it was a cold morning. It was a cold morning. It was very dark outside. We got up at probably 4.30, 5 o'clock to go. It was dark outside, very, very windy, and it was also raining and just awful. Just everything uncomfortable that you can imagine, it happened that morning. It was so uncomfortable. Well, we went out fishing anyway because we're Wisconsinites and we don't want to let cold weather hold us down. So we get ready on the pontoon. We get it ready. We get out in the middle of this lake, and our pontoon started to rock and I was really starting to get concerned. Now, do I trust my Uncle Jason? Of course I do, no doubt about it. But you know what I don't trust? The wind and the waves. How many of you are with me, okay? I, and I really didn't trust our pontoon. Now, the water began to push us around more and more, and the pontoon started to move around quite a bit more than I was comfortable with. And eventually, we decided to head back in, right? It, it was just getting bad. We weren't catching any fish because we were trying to stay afloat. It was getting so bad, we were running from one end of the pontoon to the other as the boat rocked. Now, you say, come on, Pastor Dustin, that's ridiculous. It's a pontoon. You're fine. That thing's not going to sink. You know, it, it's it's the, one of the safest watercrafts that you can have out on the water. And you can go ahead and think that until you hear what happened next, okay? Because the story gets worse from here. The waves were getting real bad, and the pontoon was rocking all over the place. All of a sudden, this pontoon boat went under the water. The front of the pontoon boat went under the water. A whole bunch of water flowed onto the pontoon. We all bolted to the back of the pontoon to get the front of this thing out of the front of the water. And of course, as we ran back and balanced out the pontoon, all that water came back with us, but the front finally came up out of the water. Thank God we were alive, but we almost sank a pontoon on a lake. I remember thinking I was going to die. I remember thinking I'm not going to make it. We're not going to get back home. I, you see, it, you know, in that time, it's like I had nowhere to go but to stay on the pontoon. It was like the, the, every route possible is bad, you know? Have you ever been in a spot like that? Every route that you could go was bad. Now, I did, I did have a story to share uh, when I got back. At least we had that, but my family members to this day that did not come along for that early morning trip still discount the intensity of that story uh, because they weren't along. And I will forever tell the story about how bad it truly was, because I was there. But today we continue our series called Same God. And a few weeks ago, we talked about the stories of Jacob and Moses. Um, did I mention that we got back safely to shore? I don't, did I mention that part? We did. We're, we were fine. We still are. We're, we're okay. Okay. But we, we started this series a few weeks back. We talked about the story of Jacob and Moses to kick it off. Jacob was promised that many generations of people would come from him, but his wife was infertile. His wife could not have a baby, but God stepped in and made this infertile woman fertile again so that she could have babies, and God's promise to Jacob was finally fulfilled. Somebody say amen. Thank you, Lord, that he provides a way. We also talked about Moses and how God stepped in and parted the sea so that the Israelites could walk right through and be safe from the attack of the Egyptians. The same God who parted the seas back then is the same God who can make way for you today in the situation that you need help with. So last week then, we talked about Mary, the mother of Jesus, and how God did this miraculous thing, and this virgin woman became pregnant with a baby boy named Jesus who was the savior of the world. God's favor rested upon her, and the same God that used her to bring the savior of the world into this world is the same God that, that can do those amazing miracles for you today. We additionally talked about David last week and how God gave him 
courage and valiant strength to overcome this giant named Goliath. The same God that was with David as the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon him is the same God that is with you today and can help you do whatever it is that God is asking you to do. So as we know, this series is based off of the song, Same God by Elevation Worship, which is the song that we ended our worship service with today. We're going to begin in Acts chapter 12. If you can open to there, again, that's Acts chapter 12, and I'll be reading out of the English Standard Version. If you'd like to follow along in the Version Bible app, you can open the Version Bible app, click on a tab that says More, click on Events, and search our church's name, and all of the sermon notes for today are in there. All the scripture references are there, and so that's a very nice resource for you to be able to follow along with. Additionally, if you're new to the Bible, you're welcome here, and we have these pew Bibles right ahead of you that you're welcome to grab. Uh, we don't ask that you're a biblical scholar to attend our church, okay? We don't ask that you have it all together, but we do ask that you're at least a, a biblical student. And, and what that means is, is this, that we want you to be willing to grow in your knowledge of God and, and who He is and your knowledge of God's Word. So please don't feel like you've got to have it all together to come to church. You don't have to have it all together. I sure don't. And at our church, in general, it is okay to not be okay. It is okay to not have it all together, and we want to help you along in your journey with God. So with that being said, you can follow along in the Bible provided in the seat in front of you. We're going to be in Acts chapter 12, and because I didn't make note of what, uh, what page that's actually on, I'm going to flip to it so we can find it here. Acts chapter 12 is on page 1094. If you're new to the Bible, you don't even have to find the Acts 12. Just turn to page 1094. That is where we will be today. Everybody on the same page? Literally? <laughs> This morning, great. So today we're talking about how the same God that freed captives and healed lepers is the same God that can do those kinds of miracles still today. Point number one, Peter's freedom. Point number one is Peter's freedom. As we approach Acts 12, we see that King Herod had arrested some of the people who belonged to the church, and he actually had James, the brother of John, killed by sword. Okay? We saw that the Jewish leaders were pleased by that, and so then they seized Peter, intending to most likely kill this fella as well. That brings us to verses 4 and 5. And when he had seized him, he put him in prison, delivering him over to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending after the Passover to bring him out to the people. So Peter was kept in prison, but earnest prayer for him was made to God by the church. First of all, we believe in the power of prayer here. Okay, if you're, if you're new here, we believe in the power of prayer. We believe God still moves today. So what we did there during worship and praying for different people, we don't just do that because it, it's, it's nice. I mean, it is nice, but we don't do that because it's nice. We do that because we serve a powerful God that can heal still today. We believe in the power of, of God. So additionally, we see that King Herod was wanting to get rid of Christians, and the Jews seemed, the Jewish leaders seemed to be pleased by this. And so... They had, they had Peter put in prison, who was a great man of faith, and he was also not afraid to speak his mind either. Okay, the thing is, Peter was with Jesus through his earthly ministry. Peter remembers Jesus. He remembers Jesus' death and resurrection. He was with Jesus through it all. Let's think about it differently. If you were hanging off of a cliff by one hand and you were about to fall, think of the Lion King scene, okay? Uh, Mufasa is holding on by one and Scar pushes him off. Okay, I'm not Scar. I'm going to be actually the one that's going to help you, okay? So imagine you're hanging off a cliff and I grab your hand and I pull you up to safety. For the rest of your life, you will remember that moment and know, Dustin saved my life. You will remember that moment. And you'll probably tell other people about it. And if someone tells you that that story isn't true, you're going to be like, that, that's ridiculous. I know it happened. I was there. It happened to me. It wasn't a dream. It's not some fantasy. It actually happened to me. Okay, so in the same way, Jesus saved Peter's life. Peter came to faith in Jesus Christ, and Jesus saved him from a life of death and doom. Jesus saved him for eternity and he believed in Jesus because he was with him and no one was going to shut him up about the story of Jesus because he saw it with his own eyes. And another interesting thing to note is that Peter is bound by four squads of soldiers. One squad of soldiers is four soldiers. Four squads of four soldiers. Now listen, I've got a degree in Bible, not math. But four squads of four soldiers each is 16 soldiers. That's a lot of soldiers. Peter is such a threat to King Herod that he guards him with 16 soldiers. 
onward in verse 6. Now when Herod was about to bring him out, he's talking about Peter, on that very night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and sentries before the door were guarding the prison. So we see here Peter sleeping between two soldiers. Now I'm not sure if that is two more soldiers than the 16 we just read about, but if it is, that makes 18 soldiers. Okay, so, and there are sentries before the door that were guarding the prison. Sentries is plural, so let's just say that's two more. So Peter was being guarded somewhere between 16 to 20 soldiers as he's in prison. Okay, for some reason, King Herod was so threatened and did everything he could to keep Peter bound in this prison with all these guards. You know, he seems like a very insecure man. We talk, kind of talked about this last week. Goliath had this threat to David, and I said, listen, if somebody is threatening you and somebody's trying to pull a power trip on you, they're probably more insecure than you'll ever be. Just wanted to mention that. But additionally, let's not discount the fact that Peter's sleeping. Peter's sleeping on the day before. He probably was going to be killed. James was just killed. We read that. And then that pleased the Jews. So Peter was seized. He was probably about to die. He knows he's next on the chopping block. But he had such peace in this prison while he's sleeping. What a man of faith. Can I tell you, I probably wouldn't be sleeping. Can I just be honest about that this morning? I'd probably be an advocate for staying up all night and praying. My mind would probably go back to, you know, Peter was with Jesus. My mind would probably go back to, man, I remember back in the garden when Jesus was about to be killed and he was up all night praying. But what does Peter do? He's sleeping, okay? That's actually similar to the story of when Jesus was praying because Peter was sleeping too <laughs> when Jesus was praying when he was about to be killed. So at least, at least he's consistent, okay? So he probably knows that, right, that James has died for his faith already. He knows he's next on the chopping block, but, but he's sleeping. And, and again, we remember that Peter was with Jesus and, and Peter's story about Jesus was, was true. Nothing was going to shake him of the truth about Jesus Christ. And I believe he was given some supernatural peace in this moment. Let's just err on the side that he was not being lazy. Let's err on the side that he was given supernatural peace. And that's good. So, verses 7 through 8 says, And behold, an angel of the Lord stood next to him, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, Dress yourself and put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. All right. Now, this angel of the Lord miraculously got past 16 to 20 prison guards and appeared before Peter, and the angel woke him up, says struck him on his side, for whatever reason, maybe he's a really hard sleeper, well, he struck him on his side, okay, and Peter woke up, right, and, and told him to, to, to get up and get his clothes on, and he had these chains fall off of his hand, Peter was freed from the prison that he found himself in, and some of us that have come to church today have come so bound up in addiction, or in brokenness, or in shame, or in doubt, and in hurt that you can't even find left from right, and you might feel like you're spiritually sleeping. But I want you to understand what God would have you understand today. Some of us need to be struck on our side and woken up to the reality of the fact that the Savior of the world is knocking on your door and wants to give you new life as you believe in Him. That prison that you might find yourself in today, you don't have to live there anymore. God says, son or daughter, get up off of that dirty floor, dust yourself off, clean yourself up, and walk with me out of this prison because you don't need to live here anymore. God is still freeing captives today. We just sang about that in this song. We saw it in the truth of the word of God, and it can be applied to your life today that the Savior of the world is knocking on your door. He wants to set you free from the captivity that you are in. Let's be encouraged today by the prophet Isaiah out of Isaiah 61 verse 1. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Listen, God's in the business of opening up the prison for those who are bound. And I hope you know I'm talking about the prison of sin, the sh prison of shame, the prison of guilt, the prison of doubt. Whatever the prison is for you today, you know exactly what it is. The same God that broke the chains of bondage off of Peter 
is the same God that can take your chains of bondage today and free you from that prison cell as well. Do you believe that today? Romans or Acts chapter 12, verses 9 and 10 says, And he went out and followed him. This is Peter. Peter, he did not know that what was being done by the angel was real, but he thought he was seeing a vision. When they had passed the first and the second guard, they came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them of its own accord. It opened all by itself. And they went out and went along the street, and immediately the angel left him. Okay, Peter followed this angel out of the prison passed all 16 to 20 prison guards and walked his way right into freedom, right into freedom. Many more miracles that I want to note today. Number one, an angel of the Lord appeared in the cell. That's miraculous. Number two, a light shone in the cell. It was the middle of the night and a light shone in the cell. Miracle. Number three, the chains fell off Peter's wrists. There's another miracle. Number four, they passed by all the prison guards and none of them seized them. Four squads of four soldiers, 16 guards, plus two guards, and estimated 20 guards that they passed by. That's a miracle from God. And number five, the iron gate leading to the city opened up by itself, and they went through. Five different miracles that I can see, and I'm sure if you looked a little harder, you could probably find more. God was with Peter. That's the message today. God was with Peter, and although his situation seemed impossible, he trusted in the Lord. He trusted in the Lord, even enough to catch a little cat nap before an angel nudged him on his side to wake him up. He trusted in the Lord, and God did many miracles in his life, the freedom that Peter was able to experience. I want to also talk about the lepers that were healed. Point number two, the leper healed. Now, God, is, God sets captives free, okay? God sets captives free, and I want you to know he can do that for you today. But the other focus I want to take from this song about same God it is this idea of healing, healing, okay? Let's look into Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8 happens, and Jesus had just begun preaching to people on a mountainside. He had already began healing people in his ministry when he has a situation come up at the beginning of the chapter. Let's read about it now. Romans 8, 1 through 3. When he came down from the mountain, this is right after the Sermon on the Mount. When he came down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And behold, a leper came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Man, just like that, right? Just like that. Jesus had begun his ministry of healing, and as this man with leprosy had faith in Jesus and faith that Jesus could heal him of his leprosy, Scripture says that immediately Jesus heals this man, and he was made well from that moment forward. He touched the lepers in the New Testament of the Bible, and the same God who did that is still healing people today. Point number three is the prayer of faith. James 5, 14 through 15 says, Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up, and if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. One of our core doctrines in the assemblies of God is divine healing. Divine healing. You can read about it in our 16 fundamental truths of the assemblies of God. We believe in the truth of the word of God that says that as we pray over people, that the prayer of faith will make the sick person well. When we talk about scriptures like this, though, many people have doubts. Many people think about that loved one that they've prayed for that has died even after many people of faith prayed for that said person. And so we ask the question, And it's okay to be honest. I said, you don't have to have it all together this morning. So this is the proof of that, that sometimes we ask why. Why did that sick person not get better? God, you must not be faithful. Why are some of us in this room that are faithful people to God still dealing with a sickness that has overtaken us for far too long? The answers to those questions we may never have answered on this side of eternity. But I'd like to answer the question by saying this, that I'm struggling with that at times too. I'm struggling with that question of why too, because sometimes it's really difficult when you know someone that you love and they end up passing away or they end up not being healed or they're still suffering even yet today. I had a grandma, my grandma Jeannie died over 10 years ago now from breast cancer and you wouldn't believe the amount of people that prayed for her. You wouldn't believe the amount of people. It was crazy. We had people, you know, come forward and serve in church service and people would pray over her and and. She passed away. 
And so then, you know, we dealt with that, and, and many of you have had maybe a similar experience where you, you say, why? We had faith, though, God, and, and why, why does that have to happen? And so you know that as your pastor, my, heart's, my heart is to be genuine with you and try not to be someone that I'm not. So this is a pretty real statement here today that I'm 10 years out from that experience of death and I still don't understand why God didn't heal her and I still think it's not fair and I'm with you in the questioning of why. I'm in that struggle with you. I, I'm in that with you. I, I hear you. And if there was an answer to this, surely some genius would have told us by now. So recognize I don't have a, a big life-changing answer. But what I do know is that in the midst of it all, we can still take God at his word. I would also throw out this idea too. God sees the bigger picture that we don't see. Okay? Um, and I do know that for a believer in Jesus, Philippians 1.21 says that to live is Christ and to die is gain. So I know it's not easy to comprehend or accept, and I wish there was an easier answer, but longer life on this earth is really not our goal. Longer life on earth is not our goal. Our hope as believers is the hope of heaven. So amongst my doubts, amongst my trouble, it's still hard, amongst my trouble with asking why, amongst my struggle and pain, even for those who are not yet healed and who are still sick, I... I choose to take a step forward, and I would just ask you to do the same with me. I ask to take a step forward and take God at his word and believe what God's word says. God doesn't say that if someone doesn't get healed when you pray over them, that there's something wrong with you or them. That's not what scripture says. We need to choose faith and move forward and still continue to pray for the sick with confidence in our God, because again, I've prayed for people and I've seen them healed literally of physical ailments before my very eyes. And they were healed in a moment. And it's not because of me, it's because God is still working today. God is still working today. God is still working today. Karen, would you come forward to the piano this morning? Where's Karen? She's going to help us out on piano this morning. I got a story I want to tell you of a dear friend of mine that passed away. His name's Butch Netting. Many of you remember him. He was on the board here at our church. Sweet, sweet man, and I miss him greatly. He, when he was alive, he was telling me of a story that he was over in the trailer park and he was praying for somebody. He had just been baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. As a, uh, as a pastor in a different denomination for years in his life, he, he retired, came here, believed what the Lord said about being filled with baptism in the Holy Spirit. So he was, and he went over into the trailer park. He was praying for a woman who had cancer in her lungs. She had lung cancer. And he told me one day, he come into the office and he said, Dustin, I gotta tell you something that was really, really cool. He said, I just started speaking in tongues a few weeks ago. <laughs> he said, I went over to this lady, and I know she probably didn't really get what was going on, but he said, I, I went to her in the midst of her pain and her her, her cancer and I prayed that she would be healed and I started praying in the spirit over her and I really wasn't sure all what I was praying in the spirit but I did I was faithful to do that and he said would you believe Dustin she went to her doctor's appointment the next time and that cancer was gone all the cancer that she had was gone listen that's not a story from the Bible that's a story from two three years ago at that trailer park a block away God's still moving today Okay, he's moving today. He moved two years ago. He's moving now. He can move in your situation yet again today. And so what I'd like to do this morning, I'd like to have our deacons come forward again and be available for prayer. Deacons and spouses, if you can come forward right now. This is the time. This is the time that we want to provide an opportunity for you to come forward and receive prayer and be freed from the prison that you feel locked up in be prayed for for healing today, whether it's a prison you feel locked up in or whether it's an addiction or whether it's a healing that you need, we want you to be able to come forward and literally take God at his word and ask God for healing today. I told the story at the beginning about being out on the lake on that pontoon. I had nowhere to go but stay on that pontoon because everywhere around the boat was unsteady water. I felt locked in, right? The waters were crashing against the boat and you might feel today that you're locked in that prison cell thinking there's no way out, but with God, someone say, with God, all things are possible. There's a way out. He's still freeing captives today. He's still freeing captives today. So 
And this morning, if that's you, first of all, could you stand with me today as we close our service? We're going to have prayer for whoever wants to come forward today and listen as Karen plays the piano today. Spend time in his word. As we do this this morning, take a step of faith. Take a step of faith. The time is now. If you want to receive prayer, come forward. I'm going to step down in a moment and pray as well. But again, if that's you, if you need prayer, come on forward. If you need prayer for healing, if you need prayer for getting out of that prison cell, whatever that looks like for you today, come on forward and let's agree together in prayer.